In this video, we're going to look at solving basic equations with unknowns on one side. Let's start off by looking at the difference between an expression and an equation. An expression could be 2x plus y plus 3x minus 2y. This is an expression, so it's a collection of algebraic terms. If we have an equation such as 2x is equal to 4, we will always have the equal sign in. So the difference between an expression and an equation is that an equation will have an equal sign in. What we're going to do in this video is look at some basic equations where we have an unknown on one side. So the unknown here is x. Another way to look at this is two lots of something in this box is equal to four. The way in which I'm going to teach this will initially seem quite overkill, but as you go through with more challenging examples, it will make sense of why we do it this way. So what we're looking to do here is solve for x. So I want to know the value that we have here. So two lots of a number is equal to four. I think we'll all agree that that number is going to be equal to two. The way I'm going to approach this is to balance the equations throughout. So if I just now draw some scales, what we want to do here is now do the same to both sides to find the value of 1x. So what I'm going to do here is divide both sides by 2. If I divide both sides of the equation by 2, we remain now with an equal statement. So all that gives me now is 1 lot of x is going to be 4 divided by 2, which gives me 2. So what you can see here is I've got 2 multiplied by x is equal to 4. So we can say now dividing both sides of the equation by 2 that x is going to be equal to 2. Always go back and check your answers in the equation. So for example now if we had 3x is equal to 9, we would simply divide both sides of this equation by 3 and that would give us 1 lot of x. So we can see from here that x would be 9 divided by 3, which is going to give me 3. Or you could have said 3 lots of something in the box is going to be equal to 9. So the box is going to be equal to 9 divided by 3. OK, let's look at another one. Let's say we have now x divided by 2 is equal to 3. So some number divided by 2 is equal to 3. So this time I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. If I do that, I'm simply going to have x and then 3 times by 2 is going to be 6. So my answer is 6. If we look at that there, that's blindingly obvious. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so it works. As you can see, I'm doing the opposite or the inverse. So 2 multiplied by a number was 4, so we divided by 2. 3 multiplied by a number was 9, so we divided by 3. x divided by 2 was equal to 3, so we did the opposite and multiplied. So for example, now if I had x divided by 5 is equal to 4, we would multiply both sides by 5. So multiplying both sides of the equation by 5, x would give me 4 times by 5, which is 20. So this is now when we have an unknown on one side. So let's look at a slightly harder example. Let's say we have now 3x plus 1 is equal to, and we'll go on here for 13. This time I have plus 1. What we need to do is work this backwards. I want to find the value of x. If I think about x, x started its life off. It was multiplied by 3 and added 1 to it. So what I'm going to do is go ahead now and solve for x. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I need to do to the other side. So I want to now isolate this 3x on the left-hand side of the equation. So this is the left-hand side and this is the right-hand side. So what I'm going to do is subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. That's going to leave me 3x is equal to 12. I'm now going to divide both sides of the equation by 3. If I divide both sides of the equation by 3, that will give me the value of 1x. So 1x is going to be equal to 12 divided by 3, 
which is going to give me 4. So all I've done is the opposite. I've subtracted 1 and divided by 3. Let's check that that works. If x is equal to 4, 3 times by 4 is 12, plus 1, that's equal to 13. So let's have a look at this one. If I said now that 5x minus 2 was equal to 23, we would want to solve this equation for x. So starting off, I'm going to add 2 to both sides of the equation. If I add 2, that gives me that 5x will be equal to 23 plus 2, which is going to give me 25. Often students say, well, why is it? Why do we have plus 2 and where does this go? Well, if I add 2 and subtract 2, I get nothing. At this stage, I'm going to divide both uh, sides of the equation by 5. So I'm doing the opposite. Here, I have 5 times by x. So x is going to be 25 divided by 5, which gives me 5. Does that work? Well, 5 times by 5 minus 2 is 23. With these simple equations, you can work them backwards. So you can say to yourself, subtract 1, divide by 3. Add 2, divide by 5. As we'll see later on, when we have unknowns on both sides, it's better to work with the balancing method. There is an alternative of change sides, change signs. I think um, whilst it's a valid method, I prefer to balance these as it will help you as you go on with later work. So let's try another one. Let's t uh, try it now. 10 minus 3x is equal to 1. What I'm looking to do here is get x by itself or 3x by itself. So what I'm going to do at this stage, as I've got subtract 3x, I'm going to add 3x to both sides of the equation. If I do that, I'm going to have 10 is equal to 3x plus 1. Don't worry that it's now on the right-hand side. You could just rewrite this on the left-hand side. It would be exactly the same. I just want this term by itself, so I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. 10 minus 1 is 9, and then that's going to leave me 3x. At this stage, I've got 3x is equal to 9, so 3 times by some number is equal to 9. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 3. That will give me one lot of x, and we can see from here that x will be equal to 3. Does that work? 10 minus 3 lots of 3, 3 lots of 3 is 9, 10 minus 9 is 1, so we know that it's correct. So as you can see here, using this particular approach, it just uh, keeps your work nice and tidy, and we can do it step by step. At this stage, if I wanted to, and I'll do this one again, we could have taken a different approach. So depending on how confident you are with negative numbers, what I could have done is subtracted 10 from both sides of the equation. That would have given me minus 3x is equal to 1 minus 10, which is minus 9. If I then divide both sides of the equation by minus 3, minus 3, that will give us that x is equal to minus 9 over minus 3, and that will give us that x is equal to 3. So exactly the same, I've just used a slightly different technique. So depending on how confident you are with your negative numbers, that is an approach. OK, let's look at another one. Let's say we have now x divided by 4 minus 2 is equal to 3. I want to solve for x. x is the unknown. So what I'm going to do to begin with is add 2 to both sides of this equation. What I'm looking to do is isolate the terms in x on one side. So when x is on one side, numbers on the other. So if I add 2 to both sides of the equation, that's going to give me that x divided by 4 will be equal to 3 plus 2, which is 5. I want to solve for x, so I want 1x. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 4, and that's going to give me that x will be equal to 5 times by 4, which is 20. Remember here, if we're multiplying this now, just consider if I do 4 lots of 1 quarter, that's going to be equal to 1. 
So if I do 4 times by x over 4, that's just going to give me x. If you like, these will cancel out. So you can see that any way you like. Okay, let's do another one. Let's now have, let's say we've got uh, 1 minus x over 5 is going to be equal to, and we'll make this now, let's say that's going to be 2. Okay, at this stage, I want to solve now for x. I'm going to add the x over 5 to both sides of the equation. So if I do that, just to keep this positive, you certainly don't have to, we will have 1 is equal to x divided by 5 plus 2. I want this expression now by itself, so I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. If I subtract 2 from both sides of the equation, we've got negative 1 is equal to x divided by 5. I just want x, so I'm going to do the opposite of the inverse, and that is multiplying both sides by 5. So negative 1 multiplied by 5, we get negative 5. And that's the value of x. So all I've done is gone ahead and used those rules. At this stage, you could have subtracted 1 and then multiplied both sides by negative 5. It's an option for you. OK, let's do another one. Let's say we've got 5x plus 3 is equal to 10. I'm going to solve x, so I want to isolate this 5x. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. That gives me 5x is equal to 10 minus 3, which is 7. At this stage, students start to panic because they look and they think, what do I need to multiply 5 by to get 7? All I'm going to do is follow my instinct. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 5, and we can see that x is equal to 7 divided by 5. So this now is a fraction, and that will be correct. It won't always be an integer, which is a whole number value, and it's perfectly fine to get that. So if I substituted this in, we can see that 5 lots of 7 over 5 would give me 7, plus 3 is equal to 10, so this is the correct answer. So don't worry if it doesn't come up to be a nice number, just use your rules. And this method, the step-by-step -step balancing, will help you with that. OK, let's look at another one. Let's say we've got now three lots of x minus 1 is equal to 24. So we still have one unknown, which is the x, on the left-hand side of the equation. With this one, depending on how confident you are, you could simply divide both sides by the 3. If you're not, you can expand the brackets out. So this time we've got brackets, and we're going to expand these out. So 3 times by x, that gives me 3x. Then we're going to have 3 multiplied by negative 1, which is negative 3, and that's 24. At this stage, I want the 3x by itself. Remember, x is the unknown. This is the term we're trying to find out. We're trying to isolate it to find it out. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides of the equation. 3x is equal to 24 plus 3, which is 27. Now I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 3, and that will give me the value of 1x. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to solve for 1x. So 27 divided by 3 gives me 9. Does that work? Well, 9 minus 1 is 8. 3 times by 8 is 24. So yes, it does. We'll do one more. Let's say we have now 6, and then we'll have x minus, and we'll have x plus 2, and that's going to be equal now to, let's go for 7. So, expanding the brackets, we'll have 6x plus 12 is equal to 7. I want the 6x by itself, so we're going to minus 12 from both sides of the equation. So if I do that, I'm going to have 6x is going to be equal to 7 minus 12. 7 minus 12 is going to give us minus 5 or negative 5. Again, don't worry now that you're not get it, going to get an integer number. And, and don't worry, or an integer I should say, and don't worry that this is going to be negative. Just go on the rules. We need one lot of x. 
So we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 6. And that gives us minus 5 or negative 5 over 6. And that will be our answer. So all I've done is substitute that in now, or I should say solve, I could substitute that in to check that it does work. So if you're unsure and you wanted to check that out, you could use a calculator. So with our calculator, what we could say is six lots of x. x is just the number we're looking for. So that's negative five over six. We're going to add the two to it, and we should end up with seven. And as you can see, we do. So that is correct. So that's solving simple, what we call linear equations, when we have an unknown on one side. This, remember, is an expression. It becomes an equation if there's an equal sign in it. I've used this idea of balancing, so a set of scales. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. For many, you'll see this as complete overkill, but it will build good skills for more challenging equations as we get to them.